Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I wanted to talk about a few things that we can do as hunters to reduce the chances of being seen by deer. There is nothing worse than putting in all that time with scouting, with habitat improvements, putting in food plots, and, and even just spending time in the woods only to be noticed by the deer that you're targeting before even getting an opportunity. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about a deer's senses, whether that's their sense of sight, their sense of smell, or their sense of hearing, and what we can do as hunters to avoid being detected in the woods. Now, because this video is on how not to be seen by deer, we are going to primarily be focusing on a deer's vision, but we are going to tie in their sense of smell and hearing as well, so we can learn how to be a deer's eyes, nose, and ears. And to start things off, if we wanna know how to reduce the chances of being seen by deer, then we need to understand how deer see. Deer see differently than us, and the first way that they see everything differently is they see more in 2D, where we see things more in 3D. And to give you guys an example of this, and it's not gonna be a perfect example, but it will work, you and I, we can see different depths. And to give you guys, again, an example is right now in the video, you're seeing different depths. So I should be in focus where the background should be blurry. That's depth of field, right? I'm in focus, the background is not, so you can, it, it brings attention to the subject. It, it makes me easier to see I can stand out. Deer don't see that way. They see more in 2D. They have a hard time focusing on a particular object. To give you guys an example of how deer see, and this is not going to be perfect, but we'll, we'll kind of stick with pictures and videos just so we stay consistent here. Think about your trail camera pictures and videos. There's not a whole lot of depth there. Everything seems to be in focus, right? That's closer to how a deer sees than how you're watching me right now with me being in focus and the background is not. And because deer do not see three-dimensionally like us, they rely more on picking up movement to let them know that there might be danger or maybe something's coming. And this is why a lot of times, and anyone who's hunted long enough has seen this, you'll see deer start to bob their heads a little bit, maybe move to the side. They might look over here, then quickly look back at you. They're essentially trying to paint a picture of their surroundings. And if you move, that picture will be different and they're gonna know exactly where you are. So with knowing that, and I'm gonna sound like Dr. Alan Grant, in that for the most part, a deer's vision is based on movement, we're gonna lead off with the most important tip to reduce your chances of being seen by deer, and that's to sit still. Even if it looks like the deer is distracted or maybe they're looking off to the side, it is still best to sit still. And that's because a deer's vision is much wider than ours. For the most part, we can see about 180 degrees. So if I'm looking at the camera and I put my hands out, I kind of lose my hands right about there. So around 180 degrees, when I move them here, now I can see both of my hands. So yeah, right inside of 180 degrees. But a deer's vision, they can see you know, 300 degrees, so they can see back to here. So if you're straight behind a deer, chances are they can't see you, but if you're anywhere within that 300 degrees and you move, there's a decent chance that, that deer is gonna see you. And that's because of how their eyes are positioned on their head. We have that binocular predator vision. Our eyes are set in the front of our heads, where deer, they're a prey species, their eyes are set on the side of their heads, giving them a much better chance of seeing approaching danger. So as a hunter, we need to take that into consideration. And even if the deer is looking off into the distance, if we can see that deer's eye, then there's a good chance if we move, that deer is going to see us. So obviously sitting still is the best thing you can do if you wanna reduce your chances of being seen. But unfortunately, we do still need to move around as hunters, whether that's we are looking behind us to check for deer, we heard something, we need to see what it is, or we need to take the shot there are still situations where we need to move. So these next few things that we're gonna be talking about are tips on how to move to reduce the chance that you're gonna be spotted by a deer. And the first one that I wanted to talk about is to look with your eyes instead of looking with your head or, or looking with your body. So to give you guys kind of a visual explanation of this is looking with your eyes would be you're just, you know, sitting in your stand and you're, just, you're kind of just like looking around with your eyes. And it's, it's gonna be, you have to train yourself to do this. Your initial reaction is if you hear leaves or you hear a stick snap, you wanna go like that, right? And that might be one of the worst things you can do because the first thing that's gonna happen is that deer's gonna step on that stick, you're gonna look and he's gonna look right up at you. Now you're locked in a staring contest, he knows something's up and he's gonna sit there as long as he can until you move and then he's gone. 
try to resist the temptation, first of all, to just turn and look right away, but tr try to look with your eyes first, right? Deer are very quiet. They can sneak through the woods. It's what they do all day. So if he, he can get right next to you without making noise, but then he's gonna eventually catch your attention either from eyesight or just from making noise. And so if you notice that something's over there or behind you, try your best just to look with your eyes first. And once you see that it's a deer or a squirrel, or once you have confirmation of what it is, then you can kind of either relax, it's not a deer, or it is a deer. Now I have to very slowly figure out what you're going to do next. And that kind of leads me into the second tip, is if you do have to move, try to keep your movements as tight to your body as you can. Whether that's you're, you're just grabbing something out of your backpack or maybe you're grabbing your bow, try to keep the movements tight to your body because if you just start reaching for things all over the place or going in your backpack or grabbing your bow, grabbing your gun, you're going to be drawing a lot more attention to yourself as opposed to if, if you were just keeping tight to your body and grabbing something. So if you do have to move while you're hunting, and eventually we all are going to have to, try your best to move slow and keep your movements as tight to your body as you can just to reduce your chances of being seen. Another thing that you can do to avoid being seen while you're in a tree is to make sure that you have some sort of cover behind you or you want to avoid what's called skylighting. Uh, essentially, it's a little hunter silhouette with the sky as the backdrop. It's pretty easy for a deer to see a hunter moving around from a long distance away if they're just sticking out from a tree without any cover to break up their silhouette. Not to promote moving around because again, the number one tip is to sit still, but you are able to get away with a lot more the more cover you have around you when you're in a tree. So try to take that into consideration when you are selecting your stand locations. Me personally, I like to sit in big white pines when they're available in the areas that I wanna hunt or maybe a, a big nasty oak somewhere where I can tuck in tight to the tree, have a lot of cover around me, to hopefully better hide any movement that I might be making while I'm in the tree. The next thing I wanna talk about to give you guys a better chance of not being seen by deer are a few colors that you should avoid while you're hunting. Remember, deer see differently than us, and one of the other ways that they see differently than us are how they see colors. There are a few colors that deer do not see well at all, and there are a few colors that deer see exceptionally well, better than us. The colors that deer do not see very well are the colors that we wear during firearm season for safety, the reds and the oranges. That's why we can wear bright orange suits and someone driving down the highway can pick out a hunter you know, from 400 yards away in a tree or on the ground and a deer could walk 10 yards away from that guy and have no idea that he's there. However, that is not the case with blues and yellows. Deer see blues and yellows much better than you or I. So if you were to be walking around the woods, let's say in blue jeans, or if you had a yellow shirt on, that would really draw attention to that particular area and you have a greater chance of being seen. Now it is a fact that deer do see blue better than you or I, but I personally do not know how dramatic the difference is. But to give you guys another visual example of what that might look like, I'm gonna turn the blues up on this video. And if you can see my blue jeans, that might be an example of what a deer sees as you're walking through the woods with something blue. So just try your best to avoid anything with blue or yellow. You just don't wanna be drawing any unneeded attention to yourself while you're in the woods hunting. And that's actually going to lead us into the next thing that I wanted to talk about. And that's what color flashlight should you be using when you're accessing in the morning and leaving at night. Now, when you can, maybe when the leaves are off the trees and if the, the moon is out, try your best to both enter the woods and leave the woods without a flashlight. But I know that's not always possible and there are going to be times where you do need to use a light to get to or from your stand location. And when you do need to use a flashlight, getting to and from your stand locations, I would recommend using a red flashlight. And I know I'm gonna get comments on here on how deer can see the red light on a trail camera. And I do understand that. The red light can sometimes tip off the deer that there's a camera in that certain location. But deer do not see red nearly as well as they see other colors. And if using a red light reduces the chances of a deer seeing you when you're entering in the morning or leaving at night, then I'm going to use a red light when accessing my property. And that's really all I wanted to talk about as it relates to beating a deer's eyes, but they have some other senses as well that really help them stay alive and help them pick you out while you're hunting. 
So the next thing that I want to talk about are ways that you can beat a deer's nose to again, reduce the chances of being seen. And the most important thing you can do to beat a deer's nose is to play the wind. You want to try your best to make sure that you're in a position to where your scent is not blowing where the deer are or where you think they're going to be traveling through. And playing the wind is not only for your stand locations, it's for your access on and off the property as well. You should not be accessing your property upwind of where the deer are, upwind meaning you're accessing and having your scent blow to where the deer are, alerting them to the fact that you're there. So I'll give you guys a few different examples on this particular property. When we have any sort of a west wind, whether that's a northwest, straight west, southwest, we are going to be hunting and accessing along the east side of our property. If we want to flip that around, if we have any sort of an east wind, whether that's a southeast, straight east, northeast wind, we are going to be accessing and then hunting along the west side of our property. So when we access and when we're hunting, we are always blowing our scent away from the property, away from where we think the deer are going to be. Now, if you've hunted long enough, you will know that eventually, no matter how hard you try, deer will eventually get downwind of you and there's not much you can do about it. And so that kind of leads me into the next thing I wanna talk about, and that's the importance of having a good scent control routine. Even if you're accessing and hunting on the downwind side of your property, you are still going to be leaving some sort of a scent signature on the way to and from your stand and while you're on stand. But again, by having a good scent control routine, you are going to reduce your scent signature on the way to and from the stand and while you're on stand. And so if those deer were to happen to get downwind of you and if you hunt long enough again, eventually it's going to happen, the better your scent control routine is, the lower your scent signature will be, and you might be able to make that deer think that you're further away than what you actually are, reducing the chances that he's gonna either pick you out in the tree or just turn around and run. Same thing for when a deer is eventually gonna walk by your access path. If you have a good scent control routine, wear rubber boots, there's a good chance that the deer is going to notice that you were there. But again, you might be able to make that deer think that you were there a while ago, as opposed to just 20 minutes ago, and not trigger his response just to turn and run. And while we're talking about deer cutting across your access path, that brings me into the next thing that I want to talk about, and that's try your best to access your property through a non-deer area. So that means in the morning, try your best to avoid those major food sources. And as you leave in the morning, try your best to avoid those bedding areas. Because in the morning, there's a good chance that those deer are gonna be out in the fields or in the food plots feeding. And in the afternoon, they're going to be in those bedding areas. So again, as you access your property in the afternoon, try your best to not access near or through those bedding areas. And when you leave at night, try your best to access away from those food sources. This is going to reduce your chances of being seen by deer, again, by trying your best to access through areas where they're not. And sticking with access, I wanna wrap this video up with talking about how we can beat another one of the deer's senses, and that's how we can beat a deer's ears. And it starts with how you're walking. The number one tip on how to beat a deer's ears is just to pick your feet up and to walk slow. If you watch deer enough, you'll notice that there can be a lot going on in the woods that they don't even notice. You'll have squirrels running around, you'll have turkeys you know, kicking back the leaves, raccoons walking around, and the deer do not even pick their head up. And that's because that's the environment that they're used to. They hear those noises all day, every day. They understand that those other small animals, those other prey species that are just ruffling around in the leaves, they don't pose a threat to the deer herd. However, when most of us hunters are walking through the woods, the noises that we're making sound much different than those smaller animals. And it has to do with how heavy we are. And there's one thing that we can do that most of those smaller animals do not do that'll get the deer on alert really fast. And that's this. Chipmunks, squirrels, turkeys, raccoons, if they step on a stick, it's most likely not going to break. So when a deer hears that snap, they're immediately going to pick up their head and see what the heck that was. Now, if they see that it was a squirrel, if they see that it was another deer walking up, they're gonna wag their tail and go back to whatever they were doing because they visually confirmed that whatever it was that they heard is not a threat. However, when you snap that stick, the visual confirmation is gonna send that deer running in the opposite direction. So this is where picking your feet up so you're not dragging them through the leaves and walking slow makes a huge difference. 
by taking your time to walk softly, you're not going to sound nearly as loud. So pick your feet up, walk slow, watch where you're stepping. When you do put your foot down, slowly roll that heel to the toe. About every few steps, maybe take a little bit of a break and then start walking again. Do everything that you can to try to make the deer think that you're just another fat raccoon waddling through the woods. Well guys, that pretty much wraps it up on today's video on how to not be seen by deer. I'm sure there are some other tips out there on how to not be seen by deer, and if you guys have any, or if you have any questions, please drop those in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can, and we will see you guys in the next video.